for the panel for tonight. And I'm certainly everyone here in the way of YouTube would be appreciative of these teachings that's going forth from the panel. Anointed people of God speaking to you with us saith the Lord. That it might change your life from a sinful way to a life of holiness. And this is our fervent prayer. Now, uh, I said before, we don't get no government grants. The government don't give us nothing. With a hard time. Amen. But we thank God again for His mercy and for the determination He's given us to defend the faith in a wicked dispensation of time that we are in. I got a call tonight before I introduce the panel. I got a call tonight from St. Crooks, C O R O I X in the Caribbean. And then uh, sister talked to me about an hour and a half. I was trying to get off the phone. I had to get a lesson planned together, and, but I couldn't. I could just couldn't cut it off. But there's so much deception in church out there in the world, and thank God for you too. He said, "I watch you faithfully over you too." And I stopped going to the church, churches. She said down here because none of them are teaching what you teach. Now she met. I tell you, the devil is very clever. She met some hypocrite pastor, got a small church down there. And he told her, I guess she'd been sleeping with him for about a year. And he told her, said, don't you worry about nothing because we are spiritually married. God spiritually married us. So we don't have to go, uh, no preacher, no uh, courthouse and get married because God married us. So you don't have to worry about nothing. I said, no, don't you read that lie. I said, you get away from that devil. We're in a hurry. She said, well, I try. I said, no, ain't no trying to it. Right. Now, you know it's wrong. Otherwise, you never would have told me. Right. So you know it's wrong. Yes. So I'm telling you again, yes, it's wrong. Yes. And I don't care what that devil told you. You get as far away from him as you can. Amen. Don't even go near his church. Amen. So he's in Miami holding a revival, and she go to Miami with him, with her. And what is going on in the world today? And supposed to be in holiness. So you see the deception well, either now he got a condition in his body where I think they operate him up for stomach ulcers. Yeah. Now, I, I know what stomach aches are like. So ain't nobody got to tell me that. Now, I don't know what his ulcer would have was, but I know what he's going through. Anytime you have an affliction in your body and you're going to hypocrite in the church, you a so-called pastor, and you're going to be sleeping with a woman, that you're not married to? Right. Are you insane? Right. What is your problem? Mm -hmm. you, you can find some other way to commit sin Amen. instead of hypocrite in the church Amen. and calling yourself a pastor Amen. and and got her brain work. I mean, that, that sister's locked up. But he told me God married her. I said, you believe it? it well, well, well he, he, he's my pastor. I said, you get away from that church quick. Because he's going to lead you straight to hell with him. Right. Now y'all can get married in hell. I don't know whether the devil gonna marry y'all or not. And one thing is you probably him both y'all going to hell. Amen. Amen. So she said, I, I told her, I said, now, a lot of people watch me down there on that island, St. Croix. Yeah. And uh, I told her, I said, you find a small Pentecostal church and you let that pastor watch me for a couple of months over YouTube. And if that pastor calls me, is willing to submit, I'll, we'll fly down there. And, and help you establish that church a little bit further. Amen. And we'll do this thing. Amen. So the world is really, brothers and sisters, turned upside down. And people are just about going for anything. But thank God for you too. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for you too. And thank God for the panels and for the teaching of true light. And I want to say again, true light, do not ever let nothing deceive you. Never play church. Be for real. 
in church. And it's just as easy to be for real as it is to be not for real. Matter of fact, it's easier. It's hard, it's hard to hypocrite in a holiness church. Listen to me. So brothers and sisters, let's hold steadfast to the faith once delivered. And you are the church God has chosen and set apart. We may be few in number, but we are powerful in the sight of Jesus Christ. And these YouTube uh, messages are going forward. And the panels are doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Upset the devil's apple cart. Get them to think. Get them preaching about their man. Man enough to, at least, man enough to talk about us. Amen. When they're talking about us, they're thinking about us. Ain't nobody going to talk about you unless they're thinking about you. Right. All right. Hallelujah. Right. Can you say it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going, to, now, we're going to introduce the panel. I told you to bring your pen and the pad. Let the Holy Ghost have his way with you. Yeah. On the panel, Evan Shiloh, Elder Brooks, Evan Smith, Minister Green, moderator Elder Smiley, and summary uh, Elder Wagner, summary and remarks Elder Kenya, closing Deacon Josh, and dismissal Evangelist Rogers. Now, on the summation and the, the remarks and dismissal, you have you have your choice between three to five minutes. You don't have to submit yourself to necessarily to the two-minute program. But I want you to bring out clearly what the panel has tried to express to those who seek after the truth. Now, again, your text, events, uh, get, get your uh, Bible and uh, read the text loud and clear. The text is going to be Acts, the second chapter, verse 42. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Now, the point we bring out, they continue steadfastly yeah. in what? In the apostles' doctrine. Amen. The reading text is chapter 8, verse 34 through 38. Read. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water, what doth he me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Now, here, here's something I want you to understand. Now, in the previous segment dealing with the apostle Philip, he baptized Samaritans in Jesus' name. Now, the scripture text didn't say he baptized the eunuch in Jesus' name, but we know that he did because in the previous passage he, he uh, baptized the Samaritans in Jesus' name, so obviously he baptized the unit in Jesus' name. That's how you can put line upon line and precept on precept. So some agnostic will say, oh, but it didn't say he baptized Jesus' name. But if he baptized the in Jesus' name, why would he not baptize the unit in Jesus' name? So, let's, y'all have the uh, lesson focus, is that yeah. correct? Yes. yes. Alright, you have the lesson focus? All right, panel, govern yourselves accordingly. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God for another day in holiness. Amen. Uh, uh, another day saved and sanctified with a sincere heart. Amen. Doing all that I can to make it to heaven. Amen. Thank God for, for being God all by himself. I give him honor and all the furniture of my faith. His name is Jesus, according to Scripture, God of both Testaments. Amen. I give double honor to God's true prophet, Bishop Prophet H. Walker, and first and second name, Mother Walker. And they are all worthy of it. Amen. Thank God for both their testimonies. Amen. And uh, thank God for the panel and all the preachers in the household of faith. Thank God for everyone that is watching. Amen. I, 
I've noticed that the numbers go up on the videos and, and a little testimony before we start, I, somebody uh, uh, recently uh, came to me and said, hey, I, I see you on YouTube. I said, well, well, there's only one place you can see me on YouTube <laughs> that's here. And uh, they said, yeah, I've, I've been watching uh, I've been watching Prophet and everything. So people are watching and it is a blessing. Amen. Thank God for YouTube as uh, Prophet brought out. Amen. We go right into the, the meat of the word. Amen. So that uh, a soul can be saved. Amen. And um, we're going to Acts, the second chapter, verse 42, which uh, was brought out. We'll bring out again. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And we're going to uh, Acts, our reading. Uh, Acts the 8th chapter, 34 through 38, and it reads, And the eunuchs answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? 35, Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Verse 36, And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuchs said, See, here is water, and what doeth hither me to be baptized? 37. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, which means God in the flesh. Amen. Uh, or personality. Uh, thir verse 38. And he, command he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And as Prophet brought before, we know that they all baptized in Jesus' name according to Scripture. So we already know that he was baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. When I uh, introduce the panel, we have Senior Oda Brooks, Amen. we got Evangelist Shiloh, Amen. we got Evangelist Smith, and we got Minister Green. And we're going, as Prophet brought out, we're going to tear the, the devil's kingdom down. And we're going to make somebody, we're going to make somebody mad. And hopefully we, we make somebody humble enough to accept the word and come into the to the beauty of, of the light of truth. Amen. And we start with Senior Oda Brooks. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, that church. Praise God. Again, church, happy and blessed to be found in the house of the Lord. I like to lift up this one true God who revealed the name to the New Testament church. Amen. It's our Lord Jesus Christ. Give him all praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Thank and praise God for the great prophet. Amen. So many prophets that they brought with. Beautiful, lovely help, making a lovely memory. Let like your mother walk all the saints of God and all the YouTube viewers who greet you. And uh, we greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. And hopefully uh, you receive us in the name of the Lord, you know, because you're not going to find uh, too many churches, if not no church, that's what's going to uh, preach and teach to you the oracles of God. You know, and I believe, the, like the Bible said, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So uh, uh, if God don't know you, <laughs> the devil must know you. We don't know you, you know. And that's simple as that. I thank God for our text in Acts, the second chapter, and we begin it at uh, 42. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. And it's not talking about uh, uh, physical uh, bread. It's talking about the word of God. You know, and I believe the Bible mentioned about uh, how they went to house, the house breaking bread daily. In other words, they had church daily. And mm -hmm. thank God, um, you know, for a true life. You know, even if we're not in the physical building, you still have to have church in your heart, you know, Amen. you know, uh, and like the Bible say, with that two or more gathered in his name, God is in the midst, but the, uh, the meat of it is they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and why, uh, preachers won't preach what the apostles taught. And we right. know that they're not preaching what the apostles taught because most of them baptize father, son, Holy ghost. And that baptism come from directly from the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah. They the one introduced the baptism, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, introduced Christmas, Easter, Lent, and all these uh, false yeah. deities, you know. But if the apostles baptized in Jesus' name and God rose them up and chose them to teach the people, be the example, then why y'all why not follow the apostles? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and that, that's what's wrong with 
the false church today, they want to follow man, you know, but like Peter said, or, or Paul said, uh, should I obey man or God? If I should be a pleasing man, I should not be the servant of Christ. So we trying to find favor with God. Right. <laughs> man yeah. can't take you nowhere. <laughs> but yeah. You'd be lucky if he could take you across the street, but God can take you from earth to glory. Yeah. Another man, and, and also he can bless you. He said, I bless you in this life and the life to come. And that's why true light is so blessed, you know, because yeah. we found favor with God. That's why Prophet Walker is so blessed, yeah. you know, yes. and, and we are so blessed. We don't go to no doctors. Don't take no medication. We believe in the power of God. And uh, anytime we get sick, God heals us. <laughs> and anytime anything come up, we know how to get down on the, on our knees and pray. Amen. And God bless us. You know, God hears us. Amen. 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 Um, the importance of teaching seekers of the truth how to find redemption. Um, and I want to go to our main text in Acts 2 and 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. But we need to focus on the fact that you know, they had to be taught before they were able to continue steadfastly. They had to be baptized by Peter, and Peter had to teach them what it means to be to be steadfast, what it means to continue in that doctrine. And that's what we're trying to teach people today, is that in order to continue, in order to find that salvation, in order to get redemption, you know, you have to be taught by somebody. You have to be led by somebody. You have to have a preacher. You have to have a true preacher, not no false preacher, not somebody who's going to tell you it's okay, like God was talking about, it's okay to be married to somebody and you haven't actually been married to them. It's okay if God tells you that they've been married, but you haven't actually been married and now you're just sleeping on somebody just because you want to. We, You know, you have to be taught the truth. You have to be taught what it takes to be saved, what it taught you have to be taught what it takes to, you know, be whole, what it takes to be cleansed, what it takes to, you know, go down in that water, what it takes to when you come up from that water. And like they continued, they kept going. They didn't give up after they were baptized. They didn't fall away after they were baptized. They kept going. And that's what's important because in order to be steadfast, you got to keep going. You got to stand on the word of God. You got to, you know, act on what you've been taught. You can't just be taught and then sit there, you know, like a bunch of bones, like dry bones. No, like, you know, like Jeremiah said, the, the word of God will shut up in his bones. So when you go down in the name of Jesus and what you standing on the word of God, you know, you have that Holy Ghost. You have that, you have that redemption that you're seeking. And that's what we're trying to teach people. We're trying to teach you how to be saved. We're trying to teach you how to keep going. Not to just get baptized, not to just get prayed for one time and then you give up after you've gotten that. Because the thing is, if you keep going, God can show you so many things. God can show you all these miracles. When you, you know, when you're in crying in the midnight hour, when you need a healing, when you need a breakthrough, when you need a miracle, that's when God, when you keep standing on the word of God, that's when God can work for you. When you show Oh God, will you prove to God, God, I'm not giving up on you. I'm just going to come to this church and I'm going to leave. You know, mentally, I'm going to leave. I'm going to stay here for however many years, but mentally, I've already left two days ago. No, that's not how God works. God needs you to be here present, not just your body, but your whole soul, your spirit, because that's how God will use you. That's how God can bless you. That's how you get a miracle through when you stand on the word of God, when you stay steadfast, when you believe in God and you believe in the word, and you don't just sit here and act like you believe, but you truly believe and you continue in the apostles' doctrine. Pray my strength to the Lord. Amen. When it comes to save us, there's so many people that are stuck on so many other doctrines. There is not another. The Bible says that. There's not another. If you add or, or take away from the words of this book, it take your name out of the book of life. Why not search the the the, the it just amazed me how people can every day uh, do things that are beneficial to the natural, but you can't do nothing beneficial to the spiritual. I, I just don't get it. This life is only for a moment, and people are so deceived by the by deception. You're so deceived by glitter and gold. Glitter and gold is in heaven. As I said before, amen, right. they, they got to focus on heaven. That is forever, amen. Hell is also forever. Right. And I'll choose to suffer for Christ down here for a moment and be in heaven forever, amen. amen. So amen. keep that in mind, amen, to encourage you. Betty Smith. Right. Praise the Lord, everyone. Everyone out there.
Amen. Amen. I want to give all of Jesus Christ in my life to my prophet Walker, Amen. late, late, late Mother Walker, Amen. to the Bellic Brook Mother, Mother Smith, all the elders, ministers, deacons, evangelists, all the sisters and brothers in Jesus' name. And we thank God for another opportunity to bring forth God's work. It's all about Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know that he may increase and we decrease. Amen. Yes. We just all something simply coming to you. Like the Bible say, you know, be gentle, apt to teach, but that gentle doesn't mean we are compromisers or we back down. But we always are in memory that where we were. We used to be where you were. And we're trying to get you to be where we are right now. If you just have some humility. Uh, and the scripture is bringing out about continuing in the word of God. But I like that, you know. A lot of times people come to church or whatever they think they are in a true church. And then they go back and sin the very next day. They just got baptized. And then they go back and go back to the same thing. They act like they, it didn't mean anything to them. Like, uh, they don't have to do anything, but you do. you got to pick up your cross. And God said, pick up your cross daily. And if, if a church is not teaching you that, then you're not in a true church. And uh, I want to go to, um, right now, 1 Timothy 3 and 15. You know, uh, you gotta, you got to be in church. You can't be around people to say you don't. it doesn't take that. You have to come to church. God tells us not to forsake assembling ourselves together yes. with the believers. And in 1 Timothy 3.15, But if I tell you, Lord, that thou mayest know how thou art to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, and the pillar and the ground of truth. So uh, if the church is not teaching the truth, that's indeed you're not in the, you're not in the true church. You want to be saved, redeemed from what? The wrath of God. God's wrath is on the land right now. People don't even see it. Doesn't that make you fearful? I want to get myself right with God. A lot of people don't have fear of God. Because they would be trying to come to church. We should see every day. If somebody comes to church, every time doors, church doors open, they keep coming and leaving and leaving and coming. I mean, that's not continuing the word of God. So you have to have fear of God. Pick up your cross. And you have to, uh, like in Romans 6, 1, he's talking about, shall we, um, you know, shall we continue, continue in sin? And, then, you know, God say, God forbid you have to continue, you have to uh, pick up your cross. God says to follow after holiness, follow peace and holiness, which I wish no man shall see the Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, I'd like to thank God for bringing myself and each and every one of my brothers and sisters out of the darkness and in the marvelous light, bringing us to a true double knowledge of the Lord who's brought us up the mountain with him to teach us God's ways. According to the scriptures, Isaiah 2 and 3 says, Many people shall go and say, Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God. He will teach us his ways. That's exactly what Prophet H. Walker has done for each and every one of us. We love you so Amen. very much for Prophet. We love you so very much. That, that you what you've done for us lord jesus we right. pray that we never let you down again as we've done so very many times in the past we pray that you know uh, we follow your commandment and walk in the newness of life and we go forth in your name only uh, tonight's scriptures was acts 2 and 42 it says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers you know the bible tells you that you got to be baptized in jesus name before you do anything uh, that's, that's how the apostles did it. That's how it's supposed to be done. Stop following these false churches. Uh, you know, you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. In Matthew 28, 19, it says, Go ye thee forward, uh, preach to all the nations, teach it to all the nations, and um, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit's name is Jesus Christ. Um, Amen. Don't let all these false churches deceive you. Uh, you know, we're trying to teach you how to obtain salvation and who your Redeemer is. Uh, you know, the Bible tells you, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before you was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God has spoken by mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you on your brethren. Like unto me him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. In this dispensation of time, that's Prophet H. Walker. He is the modern day Moses, and we love you so very much for a prophet, and we thank you for all you've done. Amen. 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 service thus far. Amen. We are, we, uh, real quick. We are. We want to encourage you to to come into the knowledge of the truth. And when you hear this message, I pray that that people out there 
not only do you just hear the message, but you be a doer of the word. That means come in and get baptized in Jesus' name. Come and let prophet pray for you. Because uh, people are so deceived. And I'll tell you, this day and time, it's sad how things are, are, are really working in the world. Uh, you can't trust teachers. You can't trust policemen and police women. You can't trust uh, your, your local senator. You, you can't, my goodness, some parents can't be trusted. You allowing your kids to be cut on and like toys. It is a really sad day and time. Amen. Uh, the word of, of God is being blasphemed everywhere. But don't let God, as the Bible says, don't let God have a controversy with you. You got to, you get the word of truth right here at True Light. Now it's time for you to do something with it. Turn it over to Senior Elder Brooks. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord that says again. Praise Thank God for the uh, blessed teaching that's going forth. And I believe uh, Jesus had gave a teaching. And he said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. You know, so it's one thing to start out in holiness, but it's another thing to continue. And here's the thing, um, uh, the Baptist church, they ain't even started out. You know, I recall when I um, first uh, came to the holiness, got water baptized in Jesus' name, I filled with God's spirit, and I reflected. And uh, when I was in the Baptist church, I said, I wasn't even close to heaven. I wasn't right. even close to uh, serving God, you know, because I was in a false church. And the false church, you get false teachings, you know. And, and um, like the Bible says, God does not hear a sinner's prayer. Only time God hears a sinner's prayer is when a, a sinner is crying for help. And that's why we are here today, because we cried out for help. <laughs> Ask the Lord, Lord, we need you, help us. You know, and I thank God for the reading text in Acts this, the 8th chapter. And picking up at verse 34. And it reads, and the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray, of whom speaketh the prophet or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And that's why we Jesus only. You know, and the same Jesus in the New Testament is the same Jesus that uh, Philip preached unto him unto the Old Testament. You know, and he took the Old Testament and preached to him Jesus, you know. And a lot of people think that, oh, that's God the Father. Oh, it is God the Father, but that's just Jesus. <laughs> it's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And I believe Jeremiah said, the Lord is the true God, and there's only one Lord. You know, the, 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 the false church got it mixed up, not the true church. And that's why we're trying to applaud to the people, come out of them false churches, you know, because you, 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 you better off, you know, drinking and smoking and fornicating and living your life than going to a hypocritical church, you know, because you ain't fooling, you ain't even fooling the devil. <laughs> and, and, and you ain't, you ain't fooling people. People know you are not saved, and that's why the Bible says by their fruit, you shall know them. A person's lifestyle reflects who they are. In verse 27, and Philip said unto him, uh, believe his style in thy heart. And he answered and said, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. In verse 38, and he commanded the chariot to stand still and went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. But verse 37, and Philip said, uh, no, for, no, no, verse 36, and he went on his way. They came into a certain water, and the eunuch said, see, here is water. The, the eunuch seen water. So Philip must have preached to him some about the baptism in Jesus' name. You know, yeah. and as they were walking on on their journey, the, fifth, the eunuch told them, "Hey, he got water right here. What hindered me to be saved?" Amen. And they both went down in the, in the water. Amen. You know, and that's what you, if you want to be saved, you got to get water baptized in Jesus' name. You know, yeah. and then like the Bible said, you got to live a holy and sanctified lifestyle in this present world. The baptism is just the start. <laughs> you know, but but you got to go on further. You got to live a holy and sanctified lifestyle. And that's what a, even the, the Pentecost church today, they leave that out, living a holy and sanctified lifestyle. Yes. You know, that's why the Bible says present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. If you ain't living holy, it's not acceptable. And God don't accept no hypocritical lifestyle. Amen. 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 Am
Praise the Lord, Jesus. I want to go to our reading text in Acts chapter 8. Um, really quickly, I want to start at verse 31. And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with me. One thing I love about the scripture is that the eunuch, he wanted to understand. And, you know, some people in this world, they are so stubborn. They refuse to submit themselves to God. They refuse to be humble. They refuse to listen to the words that we try to teach them. Like when we go out and witness, they just kind of want to look the other way or they want to laugh at you and things like that. But the eunuch was seeking God. He wanted God so desperately that he was trying to understand even before Philip came along. And if we jump down to... Um, Verse 35, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. But the thing is, Philip had to teach the eunuch in order for the eunuch to understand. And that's what we're trying to teach the people of YouTube today is that in order to understand this Bible, and under, in order to understand the baptism, in order to understand what it takes to be saved, you need someone to guide you. The same way we need someone to guide us, we're trying to teach you that too so you can get saved because we have to find profit. You know, we have to be taught in the baptism in Acts 2.38. We have to talk to keep to keep our you know to keep our soul safe that we have to keep going like it says in Acts chapter 2 to continue steadfastly we have to keep going we have to keep fighting the good fight of faith and not just give up after you've been taught something or just walk away just because you don't like what somebody told you or you don't like the way it sounds the thing is the eunuch didn't tell Philip like oh, you know what I don't think that's what it says I don't think that's how it's being interpreted no he opened his ears he listened he submitted himself to what Philip was trying to teach him and that's what it takes it takes you to submit yourself to God because if we didn't submit our ourselves to God, none of us would be here because God cannot deal with a stubborn heart and that's just the bottom line of it. God is not going to deal with you if you're stubborn, if you got too much pride, you think you know more than God because I guarantee you, you do not know more than God. God knows it all and the thing is people think they get so old and they just, they're grown, they know everything that there is to know on the planet. No! God knows everything so submit yourself to God. Be like the eunuch. Let somebody teach you. Let somebody guide you. Let somebody show you what is in this Bible and let somebody break it down to you because obviously you can't understand and if you did understand that you wouldn't be seeking God further because if you just understood it, that you can go on your merry way and have a nice life. But no, there's something in you that wants God so badly, but figure out how to get God so badly. You got to know the word of God. You got to know the prophet of God first, and the prophet's going to teach you what it takes to be saved. You got to get baptized. You got to go down in that water. It's, you can't escape that. That's what these false preachers try to teach people. I can just put a sprinkle of water on you, or I can just tell you you're baptized, and that's it. No, it takes more than that. And like prophet said earlier, it's so easy to be for real with God. It's so easy. The way people try to act like, oh, I can do this, I can do that. No, all you got to do is submit yourself to God and show God I want to be for real and God will take care of the rest. That's what we're trying to tell you is that once you give your life over to God, that's really all you got to do. You don't have to think for yourself. God will take care of it. God will handle everything. But people don't want that. People are so stubborn. People don't want to give their lives over to God because they think it's something better. No, I promise you there is nothing better than the word of God. There is nothing better than getting a breakthrough when the, when the devil is trying to attack your body, when the devil is trying to do this and that, there's nothing better than being able to call on God in the midnight hour, being able to call to the prophet of God when you need that healing, when you need that breakthrough, and you've been praying, and you've been praying, and you've been praying, but you need a little extra, a little extra something. God got that for you, but you got to submit yourself to God. Give your life over to Jesus. Be like the eunuch. Be willing to listen. Don't be so quick to talk about it all the time. Just listen sometimes. All you got to do is sit back and listen to the word of God, and I promise you, if you really have that desire in you, it will touch your soul. Yeah. Pray rush with the Lord. Amen. 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 A lot of powerful scriptures have come out, but and uh, the most important thing is you have to, you know, be hungry and thirsting after righteousness because you can't make anybody want God. You have to want him for yourself. And that's the bottom line. Do you want Jesus? And I can't make you, probably can't make you, definitely God ain't gonna make you. You know, because he wants somebody to be a true worshiper. That's what he said. I'm seeking a true worshiper. People go to church all the time. They're not truly worshiping God. They're there for a show. Okay? And it's really sad to me that people come all the time wasting their time. They worry about how they look in the eyes of man than in the eyes of God. Because he's see through all these, all that phony fake stuff. You come to church faking it from the inside out. You get all the fake hair, eyelashes, fingernails, and your heart fake too. So why don't you take your fake self home and go realize that you don't want Jesus. Okay? You're fake. That's it. And I can't stand that, and nor can Jesus. That's why he puts us through what? Testing trials. Yes. He's I'm going to try your reins in your heart. Are you really fake or not? <laughs> That's what I love about Jesus. I'm telling you, he got every, every type of insurance plan, every, everything to cut out, everything. You can't, you, and you, can't go, you ain't going to come in on a prophet's coattail. 
Yeah. You're not going to come in on saints' coattail. Yeah. You're not going to come on Jesus' coattail because all he did, he already done on Calvary's cross. And the rest is for you to do. And that's why I love in Job. I like this scripture. This, this scripture's been on my heart for about two weeks off and on, off and on. I just keep going back to it. You know, I'm so tired of fake. It's just, it just so disturbing my soul right now. You know, but I hear it's in uh, Job chapter 13, and it's, it's really the first 16 that keeps coming to me, but I'm going to go up a little bit. Though he slay me, which is Jesus, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain mine own ways before him. See, the thing is, that's what I love about the Lord. Because you might be thinking all these bad things are happening to me, but I'm telling you, a million bad things coming from God is greater than one bad thing from, from a man. Because when God does things, he chastises because he loves you. He's trying to help you. But when man do it, they're doing it for your hurt. But when God trying to do it, he's for, doing it for your good. So don't take it negatively. You know, when sometimes God put you through something so he gets your attention so you can sit down and focus on what's important. Because when it's time to die, you ain't going to worry about how much money I got in my bank account, how many cars I got parked in my driveway. You're going to say, how did I treat my mother and my sister and my brother? No. What did I have a relationship with Jesus? That's all it's going to matter about at the end, about relationships. Yeah. It ain't going to matter about no money or status or nothing. You know, and, and in verse, uh, this is the other scripture that was bringing up to me. He also shall be my salvation, for a hypocrite shall not come before him. Amen. 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 You know, we, we thank Jesus for allowing us this opportunity to be on YouTube and be able to go forth. Uh, we thank Prophet for allowing us to have this panel and you know, be able to reach somebody out there prayerfully. You know, uh, like we said, you know, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name before you do anything else. You know, uh, yes. like Prophet brought out earlier about uh, this, this false pastor and uh, you know talking about being spiritually married. Uh, you know. I had a false church telling me that I was spiritually baptized, that I didn't need to get baptized. And, you know, and I actually believed it at that time. You know, it made sense. He sold, sold me the story, and it made so much sense. And, you know, all they're trying to do is steal your soul, take your money, and, you know, just get as much as they can. Until I came to True Light, and I had no idea. But I'm so grateful that I'm here now because, you know, I have a chance to, to, to do salvation. And, you know, I know who... God's name actually is, it's Jesus Christ, you know, I know who my Redeemer is, and you know, I know how to get there now, once you get baptized in Jesus' name, you know, you have to live a holy and sanctified life, like we are constantly taught, you know, it, once you get baptized, just to live a holy and sanctified life, you need to come to true life, you know, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, you need to follow Prophet H. Walker, and, and just live a holy, sanctified life, you know, if you're here at true light, you have fact been chosen, there's no... There's no question about it. You know, it says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, according, to, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of grace, where he hath abounded toward us in wisdom and prejudice, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure with which he hath purposed in himself. You know, it's so grateful that we, we, we can read this now and be able to rightly divide it and know that our Redeemer has shed his blood for us and, you know, that that he's raised up a prophet, and that prophet is Prophet H. Walker, and he loves us so very much. And he loves the Lord more than anything. And he's teaching us how to love the Lord more than anything. It says in Galatians uh, 6 and 16, As many as walk according to his rule, peace be on them, and the mercy upon Israel of God. You know, it's it's just truly a blessing to be here, so I pray my strength in the Lord. Many service thus far, amen. amen. And uh, I, I really do thank God for it because uh, this right here that we're talking about, with as far as this baptism, this is the plan of salvation, amen. To be baptized in Jesus' name. If Jesus was baptized, then don't tell me that you don't have to be baptized because you don't see nowhere in this Bible that states you don't have to be baptized, amen. amen. So we go off the word of truth. That's the problem with people. They don't open a Bible for themselves. 
Some things is just common sense. We open the Bible, there's some things that's just common sense. Amen. But if you don't want it, you ain't going to get it. Amen. Right. Hopefully, somebody get it. Amen. Uh, sing it Brooks. Amen. Praise God. And thank Amen. God for these uh, blessed teachings Amen. that's going forth. And I'm uh, reminded when uh, Jesus had sent the uh, disciples out, he told them to heal the sick, and raise the dead, and open up blinded eyes. And he was not talking about per se, a physical sickness, although sometimes it can be a physical sickness. Uh, most of the time Jesus was talking about spiritually, and that's that false church, that Baptist church, and Church of God in Christ, all you baptized in the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Spiritually, you sick, you know, because right. you don't have the Word of God. And he's going to open up blinded eyes, you know. And I believe the Bible said, having eyes see not and ears hear not, you know. we You would take a, get a Jesus-only teaching and let it go right over your head. And the word of God um, is coming right forth to you. But like the Bible say, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. You know, you can preach the truth. You can, you can bust a, a person upside the head over the Bible. But <laughs> if a person got unbelief, they will never be able to receive it because right. they got unbelief. They don't believe the word of God. Amen. Because anytime you believe the word right. of God, you're going to accept the baptism right. in Jesus. Amen. Amen. No two ways about it. It's God's true plan of salvation. In the Acts the 19th chapter, I'm going to pick up at uh, verse uh, 1. And it came to pass that Apollos was at Corinth. Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples, meaning they were followers of Christ. And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said unto him, We have no, we have not so much heard of the Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, What then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then Peter, then Paul Paul said, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying, Believe on him who should come after, that is Jesus Christ. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it goes to show you, you know, when a person truly seeking after God, they gonna submit. Yes. And they were followers of Christ. Amen. But they just didn't they hadn't they hadn't heard about the baptism in Jesus' name. But when they heard it, they didn't fight with Paul and sell him. We, we just the same as you. You know, we, 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 man of God too. They submitted themselves yeah. and got baptized in Jesus' name. So why don't secular Christianity submit themselves and get water baptized in Jesus' name? Because they don't have humility. But the Bible likens the kingdom of heaven like a child because why? A child can be taught, but a person will stubborn with pride. That's why in the Baptist church you see women with earrings, makeup, because they got that pride in them, you know? And, it, and, and God re re uh, rejects pride. God can't use no proud person because you can't tell him nothing, you know? You hear Prophet Walker, and you turn him right off and, and turn on Joyce Meyer. But Joyce Meyer telling you a lie, Prophet Walker telling you the truth. <laughs> but you turn the prophet of the Lord, I was off, and turn on the false prophet. Why? Because she telling you what you want to hear. But telling you what you want to hear ain't going to save your soul. <laughs> The only thing that's going to do is just give you a quick piece of joy, a, 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 a fake joy. But the word of God will take you from earth to glory. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank God for this panel tonight because what it really boils down to is once you've been, you know, you've given, been given the tools of salvation, the plan of salvation, what are you going to do with that? Because you got to go further than just... Um, just you know, being taught about it. Now you got to put it into action. Right. And I want to go to Matthew uh, chapter 16 um, and go to. I want to start with verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So once you've been taught the word of God, and once you've been, you know, you've been given that knowledge and you've been witnessed to and you've watched the YouTube videos, at some point you gotta you you gotta put it into action. You can't just sit there and keep, you know, just watching, you're not doing anything, you're not you know, reaching out to profit, you're not trying to actually get baptized because at some point God is gonna hold you accountable. You know, we all have to be held accountable. The only way to get to heaven is to get baptized and keep following after God. So if you're just watching YouTube and then you're not doing anything about it, you're not reaching out to profit, you're not trying to figure out how you can further that knowledge that you've been given, then you know, it's it's null and void because now now God is holding you accountable because you've been taught. Now you have you have the word of God. You know you know 
the truth and now well how are you going to act on it because that's what it takes that's what we're trying to teach you is that once you've heard the teachings once you have that once you have that knowledge that some people still to this day don't have be you know counted a blessing that you have that knowledge now and now you can you have the chance to act on it because there are plenty of people who have come across our youtube videos plenty of people i know we have witnessed to we have taught the truth people i know have listened to us people ask me all the time about my veil people ask me all the time about my religion and if once i tell you you know it's your job now to keep moving it's your job to come into church and figure out what god wants how god wants to use you what else you need to do after i have told you now it's on you because i did my part that was your trying to do your part the same way everybody in this church had to do their part they had to step through that door they had to listen to prophet they had to go down the water and then they had to you know give back to god we've done our part like prophet said when we're on these candles and we're teaching you we're we're doing our part we're doing what god told us to do so now what are you going to do about what we're teaching you what to do because you know at some point you can't just sit back and listen all the time and not do anything about what you've heard because you know the first step is listening but now what are you going to do with what you've been taught what are you going to do what are you willing to give up what are you what is holding you back from coming into the word of god what is holding you back from right. seeking the truth what's holding you back from taking out those earrings what's holding you back from washing your face what's holding you back from putting on a skirt instead of those pants what's holding you back from walking funny what's holding you back from walking through that door you know and walking the right way when you go out you know people don't want the word of god but we're teaching you and we've done our part so if you come across this youtube video and you don't know anything about that then that's between you and god pray by to the lord Amen. 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 Everybody's going to receive the word in some type of way, whether it's you watching YouTube or whether it's one of us preaching the word of truth on the street corners, wherever it is, you're going to get the word of truth. Once you accept the word of truth and you accept it to be taught, you have humility. Humility brings upon obedience. When you obeying, obeying the word, when you're you're noticing, okay, I gotta be baptized in Jesus' name. Even if I was baptized by the Son of the Holy Ghost, no, I gotta get baptized over. Why? Because we proved by Scripture that you're you're baptized incorrectly. You gotta be rebaptized. If you accept the word of truth, obedience comes in. Now you're able to discipline yourself. Now you're able to apply what you have been taught, and you're able to apply what you've been taught. Man, you are, you can fight the enemy. God will give you the tools, but you got to encourage yourself to know that despite of everybody else, all of the family, and, and I know how it is, you know, and I was coming up, you know, uh, seven brothers and sisters and, and all the, uh, uh, you know, aunties and uncles and, and favorite cousins and all that. Everybody, was, yeah, the people that went to church, they did they, their they own thing. I always knew it wasn't right. And you know it ain't right either when you see your family doing some crazy stuff and y'all leave church and, my good, wait a minute, you put a cigarette in your mouth after you walked out the church door? Well, something ain't right with that. That's, that's just common sense. That's, that's natural within us. Amen. So when you know that the word of God has come to you and everything that true light gives to you, everything that prophet gives to you is backed up by scripture. When you know this, my goodness, where's the humility to say, okay, I'm going to be obedient to the word that comes forth to me. So now I got to apply and discipline myself so that I can get to heaven. That's what it's all about, heaven. Amen. 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 Get you to get up and take action, you know. Yes. You know, when God tells us to do something, I mean, you got you got to get up and do it. You know, tomorrow is not promised to anybody. You know, but all the word of God is very powerful, and a lot of times people just really need to take a look deep inside, you know, and say, you know, who am I? Is this the way I want to be uh, five years from now, ten years from now? You know, ask yourself, am I really loving? Am I really doing everything God want me to do? If you take some time to do that and Sometimes you get too caught up in the things of this life sometimes. You know, take your attention off what's the most important thing. Most people, you know, I realize they're going to go to hell because what? Because of their feelings and their emotions. People go about feelings and emotions and the fact of God's word, you know. But they said this and that, but show me in the Bible. God says to you, you got a, you got a uh, scripture upon scripture, you know, precept upon precept. So we, we, we do this here. Prophet is showing us how to do it. 
And we can tell you, that's what we're trying to tell you right now. You should have your King James Version Bible, have it out right now, following us, so that you can line your, your life up with this word. I want to go to 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, right. except you be reprobates. So you got you you should know if you got Jesus in you. Are you doing the things that Jesus would do? And that made me think about years ago. They used to have little bracelets. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? I remember that. What would Jesus do? Are you doing everything when, when that person come across you on the freeway? Are you cursing at them when they cut you off? That's not what Jesus would do. Amen. You see what I'm trying to say? All right. You see, if somebody take your money from you, I mean, they taking it because they know they have no plan on giving it back. What you gonna do? See, what are you trying to trying to find out some trying way to get them back? That's not what Jesus would do. So you gotta add, are, are all my actions and my responses is both actions and your response to somebody else's uh, action toward you are they what Jesus would do? Then you will know if you're saved or not. Yes. It don't take too long to evaluate self. But I want to go to First Peter chapter six. That these are things that if you find yourself in this category, you, you definitely need prayer from prophet. You get baptized and get saved. <laughs> know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? I'm going to read it again. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. And so many people are deceived today. Yes. They are deceived. They think I'm once saved, always saved. I don't have to do anything. I ain't got to make no effort. I don't have to work. And it's really, it's really funny to me. Some people think, oh, um, like once I get saved, I don't have to do any work. No, you're going to do twice as much work. You got to right. do work in the natural and the spiritual now. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I really don't. You got more work to do now. Oh, and it right. said, be not deceived, neither fornicators. If you ain't married, put that, uh, just say goodbye to that boyfriend or goodbye to that girlfriend, nor idolaters. If you got Man. still celebrating Christmas and Easter, you can't do that. Nor idolaters. You're already married. You ain't supposed to be looking at another woman or looking at another man if you're married. And definitely don't go any further because, you know, you can rebuke the Satan, that Satan, that enemy, but you, you, you go take the person's number. Is that what Jesus would do? No. All right. You know what I'm trying to say? Nor effeminate. You know, you can't act feminine. If God made you a male, you're a male. You ain't act like no woman. And a woman don't need to act like no man. You know, I'm just saying, what's the problem? Nor abuse of themselves with mankind. Uh, all that smoking, drinking, whatever you're doing, doing your drugs. Nor thieves. And thieves don't mean I'm going to go put on the mask and go rob the bank. A thief is lying on your taxes. A thief is many other ways of being a thief, okay? It's little slight things, you know, that they say the small fight is full of the vine. Yes. And then it goes on more, nor covetous. You should be happy and thankful for what God gave you. Don't be trying to worry about what somebody else got. Because maybe they pray for it, work hard for it, and that was their reward. But you ain't, you ain't worthy of that right now, or you can't handle it. So don't worry about what somebody else got or don't have. Because God said, I should supply your need according to his riches by Christ Jesus. Nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. See, we were in that category. But we have been watched right now because we got yes. baptized in Jesus' name. And now we sanctify, we live a holy sanctified life. We choose to come to church every time the church door is open. We choose to pay our tithe and offering. We choose right. to do things that, you know, that are for a righteous person. But you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by His Spirit, uh, by the Spirit of our God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, saints. Oh. Again. Again, powerful panel again. You know, they really... They're really bringing out the word, thus saith the Lord, and you know, I, I, I pray that it's appreciated out there at YouTube land as much as it's appreciated by myself and my brothers and sisters yes. here. Um, and we thank Prophet for all that he's done for us. And you know, we bring out my Bible everything. You know, all these other teachers and preachers, you know, it's they're full of vain deceitfulness and philosophies, and you know, the Bible tells you to watch out for them. Uh, but we bring out everything by Bible. You know. Yes. And, after, like we said, after you get baptized in Jesus' name, you must live a holy and sanctified life. But, you know, it doesn't end there. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And that's all those false teachers out there. Uh, the Bible also tells us, you know, it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. You know, it's many people think that, you know, if you get baptized in Jesus' name and you got God with you, that all these days are just full of rainbows and sunshine and you know, it's not. You know, it's it's full of hardness and hardships. The Bible tells us that thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warrant to take himself with the affairs of this life 
that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. If a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned, except for he strive lawfully. We must strive lawfully each and every day, walk in a newness of life. And again, we thank you, Prophet. And now for summer, you're going to have Elder Wagner. So praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again, church. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being our great God, Lord and Savior. Talking about you tonight, Lord, as we always do. Talk about the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. And also give double honor to our great prophet, fearless leader, Prophet Bishop Faith Walker. Thank you for having us to the Lord. Good to love you, Mother Walker. Thank God for her. All the preachers of the gospel that did this great panel. Call for hand praise. We're preaching tonight. And to our great prophet, Prophet Bishop Faith Walker. Hand praise. For bringing forth these scriptures and letting us know what thus said the Lord. I just want to thank God for the uh, text tonight taken from. Um, Acts the second chapter, verse 42, that's the main text, and also uh, Acts 8 and 34 through 38, that's the reading text. And uh, I would just like to say that uh, when I listen to these, this panel, uh, this panel is bringing forth the word of God as it was given to them and all of us by our great prophet. Amen. No deviation, no change, but all of these teachings that we bring forth are coming from the great man of God, Prophet Bishop H. Walker, Amen. who obviously is getting them from heaven. Amen. So they're validated. Nothing wrong with these word, this word of God. And uh, one of the preachers brought out that get your King James Bible and read along with us because everything that we teach comes from the word of God. Amen. So, uh, and I, I was just thinking about how they're talking about uh, the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. I had never heard anything about the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Mother took me to church all of my life. Never heard anything about it until I heard this from the great man of God, Prophet Bishop H. Walker. Yes. And then he also, Prophet Walker, also told me the same thing that the panel was saying, that no apostle ever baptized mm, in the titles of the formula of, of, to, to, to gain salvation of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Catholic teaching, a teaching that's not of the holiness church. And without holiness, the Bible said, no man shall see the Lord. Amen. So you got to have this water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ if you're going to get to heaven, Amen. into God's heaven. Amen. You might go somewhere else where they do whatever they want to do, but whatever you want to do is not going to get you to heaven. And so they told us this panel tonight about the baptisms. They told us that you must be water baptized in the name of Jesus Christ in Acts 2.38. You on the YouTube, get your Bibles, write these down. You're not going to be able to go to them while I'm talking, but you can write them down, just like you wrote these scriptures down that the panel was teaching. Acts 2.38, Peter, baptized. And Acts uh, 8.38, Philip, baptized the old unit. That's part of the scripture that was given tonight. And Acts 10.48, Peter did it. Cornelius and his family. And Acts 19 and 5, the uh, great apostle, baptized. <clears throat> And uh, who, whoever wanted to be rebaptized, those who said, and that's another thing. When you think you're right, and the word of God comes to you and tell you you're wrong, you got to do something about that. Amen. I was living in Flint, Michigan. Prophet Bishop H. Walker had these tracks, and uh, I thought I was going to the church about something else. The man told me how to get saved. I said, this, right. this is truly a man of God. Right. I didn't know. I could have said no. Those disciples who, who were following Christ. As the uh, panel has said, when they were told that they were baptized wrong, they submitted themselves. And they got corrected, and they said, I got to follow this. They didn't argue. They didn't fight. I didn't argue. I didn't fight. I came to uh, Detroit, Michigan, and got baptized, rebaptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Never been the same since, church. So we are trying to, man, we're trying to, we're trying to show you how to get saved and stay saved. That's another thing. All these preachers were called by God. They were anointed by God. And they all obeyed the baptism uh, that the seekers of the truth were seeking. All of them did the same thing. They didn't change. They didn't de deviate. I got so much down written here that these uh, preachers, great preachers of God, let's give them another hand for preaching and teaching tonight. But one thing that stuck with me, once you do all of that, and it's good. I ain't said nothing bad about what you're doing, getting baptized in Jesus' name, did I? No. But you got to continue in this. That's right. And you can't 
uh, let anyone come along and tell you something different than what you already have heard. All right. I'm telling you, it's got to be cemented down in your soul, not just your heart and your mind. This thing has got to be in you, got to be, I mean, you mother, father, sister, brother, I believe in Matthew 13th chapter, when they came to Jesus and said, your mother and your sister and your brother is outside looking at you, they want to speak to you. You're talking about somebody who got some authority here. You're talking about mama, daddy, all them people, they seem to have the authority. But Jesus made an astounding statement, and probably told us the Catholic Church still got a problem with it. They say that Jesus looked around at his apostles, or those followers, looking at True Life Pentecost Church, and say, they that do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, they are the same. My mother, my brother, my sister, my right. Don't listen to them, George Myers. Don't buy their books. Amen. You're just making them rich. Yes. But one, I believe one of these teachers, one of these ministers brought out that what does the profit of man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? I don't care how many books you got, how many churches you got, overseas, in sea, wherever you got. If you ain't following the word of God, you're not saved. If you ain't been water baptized in the precious name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, you're not saved. So I thank God for my great prophet. Thank you for teaching us the truth. Be blessed. I'm going to have a light there now for um, Mark's going to have Elder Keaton. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God, worthy, worthy to be praised. We come to lift this great God. Our name is Jesus. We want you to according to the scriptures. All honor, double honor. One pump base walker. First like mother walker. Two men and one without a beat. The advice of the esteem of very high for a labor's sake. Yeah. You want to hierarchy on to one who is due. Also to love and memory of our beloved mother, Saint Amen. Amen. Let's give Prophet Hans a very powerful, prolific, wide word. Uh, let's give a panel of hands. I mean, they preach the word. Amen. Give the other white man a hand. Amen. I'm just sitting back there like the kid in the candy store. Amen. I'm going to be brief, but uh, I got a few scriptures to bring out. The word of God comes to lift an individual up, not necessarily tear you down. And the lesson focus, the importance of teaching seekers of the truth, how to find redemption. And the main text was taken from Acts 2 and 42. They continued steadfastly in the apostle doctrine. Yes. They went house to house, preaching, amen, what does say of the Lord. Part of that doctrine was the baptism in Jesus' name, as the panel brought out. The Godhead, people today, 98% of Christianity don't know who Jesus is, amen. They just think he's the son of God. Who was he before that, amen? Jehovah God Almighty, always was, always will be, amen. Acts 8, 34 through 38, the reading text. Y'all know that's the same Philip? Of course he knew who Jesus was. Amen. He took Jesus from the Old Testament and tied it into the New Testament. That's the, don't y'all know that's the same Philip that asked Jesus? <laughs> they all wonder, well, we keep talking about this father. And Philip tried to put him in the corner. Right. That, that same Philip. And he and Jesus kind of rebuked him. Don't you know who I am? Right. Praise God, I'm not saying God of the Old Testament. I'm not saying God that made, made the axe flow in the water, amen. I'm not right. saying God that made the sun stand still, amen. I'm not saying Jehovah God, amen. Right. Psalms 83 and 18. There's only one Jehovah. Jesus is that same Jehovah God, amen. amen. So Philip already knew who Jesus was. When you see me, you see the Father. Jesus is the visible of the, he's the visibility of the invisible God, amen. Yes. Ain't no two gods, ain't no three gods. Right. Isaiah 4, 5, and 5. One Lord. God say, I don't know nobody. Ain't no God beside me. Amen. Hallelujah. Malachi 2 and 10. Have we not one Father? Have not one God created? Why do every man deal treacherously against his brethren? Profaning the covenant of our fathers. What's the covenant? Monotheism. One God. Here are Israel. The Lord is one God. Amen. That same God. Jesus. Amen. He's the creator. St. John 1 and 10. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own. And his own received him not. Amen. Yes. Colossians 1 and 15. Who is the image of the, of the visible God. All things were made by him and for him. Praise God. So we know. Who our Father is. We know who Jesus is. Amen. amen. He's God Almighty. Always was, always will be. Amen. Second John 2 and 9. One of my favorites. Whosoever transgresseth 
and abide not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Son and the Father, Father and Son. If they come unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither be him God's speed. For he that bid him God's speed is a partaker of his evil deeds. And they don't come with the apostle doctrine. Don't say praise the Lord to him. Don't, don't agree with him. Man. Not just your physical house, but your spiritual house. Amen. You got to be careful. And, and, and I'm going to say this. God put it on my heart. Be careful what you watch on TV. Amen. amen. If you're not strong enough, leave them devils alone. Amen. They'll confuse you. Oh, oh, well, I thought this meant that in. And this, no. Go to the man of God. Amen. He, he'll bring out clear the glass of ice. I promise you. Amen. I have people tell me all the time. Where you get this knowledge from? It ain't from me. It's from the man of God. Amen. amen. I, thank, I thank God for my leader. And I pray every night. Make me more like my spiritual leader. Praise God. Amen. I don't want to be like Creflo, T.D. Jakes, and all them devils. No. I want to be like this man right here. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Please be careful of that TV. Amen. Galatians 1, 6, Paul said, marvel, like I brought I'm stupefied, that you left the gospel, amen, until another gospel. There'll be some will come and pervert the gospel of Christ, and we see that right today. Oh, well, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Now they teach it in the apostolic church. You don't have to be water baptized. But wasn't Jesus baptized himself in water by John the Baptist or John the Baptizer or John the Immerser, amen? amen. Baptized means to be fully immersed in under the water, not sprinkled yes. like the Roman Catholic Church does. If any man, 1 Corinthians 16, 22, love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. Let him be a curse. Amen. So Joyce Myers, let you be a curse. Cruffle Dollar, let you be a, a curse. Amen. Joe Osteen, let you be a curse. T.D. Jakes, let you be a curse. That demon in Philadelphia, let you be a curse all with right. your bald head, amen. Go to the hospital, you take a, all them pills, amen. The man of God ain't never... You, you don't have a testimony. You're not no apostle. Amen. You're not no spiritual leader. And I'm coming after you, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. On Twitter, on YouTube, amen. Yes. I'm coming after you, all you, all you demons, amen. amen. True light, we coming after you. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. There is no removal of sins without water baptism in Jesus' name, amen. The water baptism is what saves a person not repeating words out of the Bible or repeating what the pastor, the false pastor tells you there. Yes. And as one pounds brought out, if a person does not want to get baptized, they're not going to due to lack of obedience and their pride, amen. And in Matthew 19, it mentions that someone be baptized in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And in Acts 2, it says, be baptized in the name of Jesus. And people ask which one is right. Well, the answer is both are right because the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost is Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, today, now, the time of the program with the and now for um, this list, we're going to have Evangelist Rogers. Amen. Amen. and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I thank and praise God for that. I thank and praise God for uh, the summations, for the remarks, uh, for all of the preachers for me that have come up preaching with us at the Lord to a people that will hopefully have the ears to hear and the eyes to see. Open up your eyes. It's up to you. Though God may have blinded your eyes, uh, if you cry out for knowledge and for truth, God will give it to you. Whatever you ask of God in truth, and in faith, believing that you shall receive it if you are humble enough, as the panel brought out so uh, expertly, if you have humility, first key to salvation, to want to know God in truth, in spirit and in truth, to worship Him, and to be a part of God. God is holy. He is perfect. Yes. He is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. So you cannot have any darkness 
on you and join hands with God. It won't work. You won't go back with him. He'll reject you. He'll spew you out. You can't be lukewarm. He'll spew you out. But my point is, if you have a humility, God, although he will not hear a sinner's prayer, he will as it was brought out. He will hear a, a prayer of wanting to repent and to come unto God in truth and in sincerity. That he will do, and he'll send you to the prophet of God. He won't send you to those false preachers. He won't send you to anything false. God never led his children to any falsehood. No doctors, no physicians, none of that. God says he is the great physician. He is the healer. He kills, he wounds, he makes alive. God does these things, not the doctors out there, hallelujah. They're simply out there for those unbelievers. You know, God in his mercy, you know, allowing you to cleave onto some, some, some semblance of, of trying to get healed. Which, Because they don't heal you. God has all power. He's just allowing you to believe this. Didn't he say he'd send a strong delusion? Why not let some man that God created manipulate science to make you think you feel better instead of going to God? That's a strong delusion. Why fall into that? Why not instead allow yourself to pick up yourself and cry out to God? Even people that were possessed with devils when Jesus was passing by, they had, those people had the presence of mind to run to Jesus and ask Jesus to deliver them, to save them. Hallelujah. And Jesus did just that. So you can't blame, oh, the devil made me do it. No, there's no such thing as that. You have control over the devil. God gave us power to tread on serpents, and God gave us power over everything on the face of the earth, every creeping thing, everything. That includes the devil. So you can't blame the devil. So I thank and praise God. You know, we have to be taught the word of God, you know, without being taught. Having the humility to listen, to be taught. No student in school. What happens to those little bad kids in school that don't want to listen to the teacher? They're always cutting up, constantly in the corner, been sitting down to the principal's office. Sooner or later, they get kicked out of that class, and they never learn anything. You find them on the street corners. You find them trying to sneak into your house at 2 a.m. in the morning, trying to get what you work for, what you got your education to get a good job for. So those little kids are like those people out there that don't want to listen, that don't want to hear the truth of God's word. How are you going to learn? How are you going to graduate? How are you going to get that diploma? For us, that diploma is glory, heaven, hallelujah, when Jesus returns. I want to get mine. Do you want to get yours? The prophet's already earned his, hallelujah. He's going to get his. We're going to get ours. What about you? You have to come to the teacher. You have to come to the source of the truth. The source of the truth is God Almighty, his word, here in the King James Version Bible and his prophet who speaks the word of God for God to teach you, to teach us how to be pleasing unto God, how to live a holy and sanctified life unto God. You can't say that you can learn this for yourself. You can't get it for yourself. Look at Nehemiah chapter 8. And this is him teaching the people. And it's wonderful because it says in verse 8, so they read in the book of the law, who? The men of God read in the book of the law distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading so we have to rightly divide the word of god to you the prophet rightly divides the word of god you can't teach yourself you can't read the word of god for yourself and think that now oh you're good how many people say oh i'm good no there's none good but god and the jesus in us hallelujah that have come to get it the right way getting water baptized in jesus name is your first act plan of salvation. You have to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. He is God. Jehovah Savior. Hallelujah. God in the office of saving his people. Jesus. A created word that means Jehovah Savior. So a, a child can understand it. Matthew 1 and 21. And his name shall be called Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. He is the Savior. The only Savior. There is no other out there. It's certainly not Joyce Myers. It's certainly not T.D. Fakes. Jake's. Certainly not Creflo Gacho Dollar. It's certainly not any of these other false preachers out here who are only interested in your money. They could care less about your soul salvation. They could care less about their own salvation, let alone anybody else's. They can't see past tomorrow. All they can see is your dollar. They look at all of you as dollar signs, symbols of, of, of equity, ways that they can get a bigger jet, more uh, material things which are going to burn away with fervent heat. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? 
All of those people, I guarantee you, when they're burning in the lake of fire, if they don't repent, that's what they're going to do. Be burning in the lake of fire, I'll bet you none of that money is going to have any importance to them at that time. None of those opulent things are going to have any importance or value to them at that time. They're going to be running around trying to have the rocks fall down on them, crying out to, to, to die and won't be able to die. Right. Do you want that for your future or do you want to be hallelujah in heaven, praising God with the saints, hallelujah, with the prophet, with true light, hallelujah, praising God. God, forever wonderful where the my God streets of gold you get to walk on streets of gold you have a mansion all to your own that God designed and created himself hallelujah nothing on earth can compare to that do you want that you have to want God if you want it you're gonna work for it if you want that diploma you're gonna work for it you're gonna study you're gonna do what is necessary for you to get it and that's the only thing you're gonna do you have to have tunnel vision and not listen to those negative influences out there that will try and get you in line with Satan. You're not going to listen to the uh, lesbian coalition. You're not going to listen to those idiots out there that think you can castrate a little boy and make him a little girl. Think that you can uh, give an injection to a little girl to suppress her reproductive organs and now, oh, now she's a man. No, that's not possible. God created the male and female, nothing in between. Are you going to follow the word of God or are you going to follow Satan, the voice of Satan, your own thoughts, your own wants and desires that are doing nothing but destroying you little by little every day? Do you want to live of course you want to live. Everything that God created wants to live. I don't care how depressed you think you are. You want to live. Hallelujah. And you can live, but you can only live in Christ Jesus. You can only live with the truth. It's the truth that sets the captive free. And in order to be free, you must come to true light. Like the panel brought out, you have to act upon that that you've been taught. You have to act upon that that you really, truly desire. Hallelujah. Men, you court these women, what, to get married. That's work. Men, you uh, go out and you, you get these jobs, hallelujah. How do you, you have to apply for the job? You have to learn the job. You have to do all these things to keep the job. Why not apply that to holiness? You have to come in to salvation. You have to come in and get this salvation that God has offered to you. Amen. And it is free, but it costs you what? You have to sacrifice your own life the things that you want in the world that are not of God, and you have to come and get salvation God's way. Get water baptized in Jesus' name according to Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Forget about all those liars. It's right there in black and white in the word of God. And you have to come to the prophet of God. You have to be taught. You have to have humility. Without humility, there is nothing that can be done for you whatsoever. You have to humble yourself as we all humbled ourselves to get water baptized in Jesus' name and stay steadfast, continuing in this wonderful word of God. But if you are like this person, and I hope you're not, and I'll close with this in Isaiah chapter 25, verse 10. Let favor be shown to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. We are not such as that person, but we are those that cleave to the word of God and love it and work for it every day. Pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. 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 I wasn't going to say anything, but I have to say to the panel, you are blessed above measure, yes. and you have been given a double anointing. Yes. Don't turn your back on your calling. Amen. God has handpicked you to save a lost soul. Amen. And anybody who views these panels, you're a fool if you turn your back on what you have heard tonight. Amen. And I say again to the panel, it's not by accident God has chosen you. And don't you be a fool and leave away from your call. When I'm gone, you've got a work to do. Be steadfast. As a teacher tonight, they remain steadfast. And what? The apostles' doctrine. May the Lord watch. May me and thee, while we're absent, one from another. In Jesus' name. God be with you. God be with you. God. Till we meet again, God be with you. God be with you. God be with you until we meet again. 
We put another for you defense. Don't let him 